Last lecture we talked about major head losses. This is energy loss from flow down straight lengths of pipe. Now we're going to talk about minor head losses and these are head losses from valves and T's and other things like that and they're typically, they're, this is called minor compared to the major because these typically are, are of lower value. Um, so valves, bends, T's, things like that and we're going to use an equation that's kind of like the Darcy Weisbeck equation. It's got the V squared over T, 2G in it. But then it's got um, the summation of uh, uh, loss coefficients. So you may have multiple loss coefficients. The first um, thing that might cause a minor loss is an exit or an entrance. And these are kind of tricky because they're real easy to forget and not recognize in a, in a problem. Anytime a pipe enters or exits a tank, so this isn't exiting, this isn't jetting into the atmosphere. This is where water, or a fluid flows from a tank to a pipe or from a pipe to a tank. So this is the figure from the FE handbook and you'll notice the notation is a little different. They use C for the loss coefficient whereas your textbook uses KL. So there's um, a little uh, notation confusion here, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Um, so anyway, the loss coefficient for an exit, it says sharp exit here, but it's actually any type of exit. And what that means is fluid is exiting a pipe and entering a tank. The loss coefficient is 1. And then for entrances, and an entrance is where the fluid is going from a tank into a pipe, Depending on how that's set up, it varies from 0.8 to 0.1. Contractions and expansions can also cause a minor head loss. And in the picture here, you can see this is a contraction going from a larger diameter pipe to a smaller one. And the loss coefficient varies anywhere from um, 0.5 to 0. Um, one other thing you need to be careful of so, so it's a function of the relative areas, A2 over A1, where A2 is the smaller pipe. Also notice in the head loss equation that's drawn on this figure, it uses V2 for the velocity in the small pipe. That's just um, a choice. And you, when you use a figure like this, you have to make sure that you use the, the pipe that they recommend. Uh, same thing here. Here is an expansion, and the head loss can be as high as 1 and go down to 0. Um, and in this case, they use V1 squared, which again is the smaller pipe, but now it's the first pipe instead of the second pipe. So just make sure when you use one of these figures that you use the right equation as well. Okay, and then there's all kinds of little devices you can imagine that would cause a head loss. Things like elbows and bends. Um, threaded versus flanged. Threaded obviously is a is a um, fitting that you screw on whereas flanged is, is like um, a, a copper fitting that you would um, solder together or a plastic fitting that you would weld together with a glue um, T's, notice there's a difference between line flow and branch flow. Line flow, the, the fluid is going past an opening and just going past it, whereas branch flow, it's, it's taking a 90 degree turn and going down a branch. Um, and then valves, you should um, make sure you check out the textbook for the valves because they have pictures for all these different kinds of valves and they're, they're kind of cool. The, globe valve versus a gate valve versus a ball valve. Okay, let's do an example of solving the energy equation considering minor losses. Um, so here we have two reservoirs connected by 2,500 feet of PVC pipe. Uh, a thousand foot of it is two foot diameter and the rest is one and a half foot diameter. You're given the velocity in the first pipe, and the question is, considering all the losses, find the drop in head. Now you should be, you should get used to this notation. Consider all losses is what it might say, 
if you remember back when we were doing Bernoulli, it said uh, ignore all losses. Um, and then some problems in this chapter will say ignore minor losses. And what that means is you have to consider the major losses, but not the minor ones. Okay, so in this case, it's consider all losses. We're going to start. So this is a classic energy equation problem. We need two Bernoulli points or two control surfaces. Tops of reservoirs are great because the pressures are zero, the velocities are zero. In this situation, we have no pump involved. So the head loss is just equal to that change in elevation. For our major head losses, we're going to use the darcy weisbeck equation. And notice since we have two pipes in series that are different velocities, we have to use two different um, major loss equations that are added together. And then we've got our minor losses, and I, um, I count three. There's an entrance as the fluid flows from the tank into the pipe. There's an exit as it goes from the pipe back into the second tank. And then there's a contraction where the pipes are joined there. Okay, for the entrance, it looks like a sharp entrance to me. So that would be a loss coefficient of 0.5. And for the exit, for all exits, use a loss coefficient of 1. For the contraction, we need to know the relative areas. So A2 over A1 is um, 0.563. And that gives us a contraction coefficient of around 0.2. OK. So now. What else do we need in these equations? We need the velocities. We have the velocity in the first pipe. We need the velocity in the second pipe. We can apply conservation of mass. All of the flow entering that pipe has to come out the other end. So the flow rates have to be the same. We can do a ratio of areas to determine the velocity in the second pipe of 7.11 feet per second. We then need to solve for the major losses, so we need the friction factor, so we need to use the Moody equation. So we need the Reynolds number and the relative roughness. So the Reynolds number is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the fifth in the first pipe. In the second pipe, it's 8.8 .8 times 10 to the fifth. We go to the Moody diagram. Because it's PVC pipe, we're going to use the smooth. Um, the smooth line. So for the 6.6 .6, we read up and over and that gives us an F of around, let's see, 0 0.1125, 0 0.1, yeah, 0 .125. <laughs> and then from 8.8 .8 we read across and that's 0 0.012. Okay, so an F of 0 0.0125 and 0 0.012. Now we've got everything we need to solve. We just plug it all in. And I'm going to break this up. For the major losses, that adds up to 10.97 feet. For the minor losses, it adds up to 1.1 feet for a total of 12.1 feet. And if you look at this carefully, you can see why the major losses are called major and the minor ones minor because the minor losses are typically much smaller in value to the major losses. And they're often insignificant and um, in many problems you'll be told just ignore the minor losses, just focus on the major losses.